Hi, I'm Chris Prezi, an appraiser with FCC. As a producer, it's sometimes necessary to determine the market value of a property. It might be for financing, financial planning, or just wanting to buy or sell. Have you ever wondered how farms are valued? Well, with a dairy barn in Ontario, or a quarter section in Saskatchewan, or an orchard in BC, similar approaches to value are used. But first off, what is market value? So there's a variety of definitions, but a simple way of putting it is the price paid between two willing parties acting knowledgeably and in their own best interest. Now there are three different approaches to value. The income approach, cost approach, and the direct comparison approach. First is the income approach, which is seldom used for agricultural properties, so I won't go into too much detail here. It's based on the premise that an investor uses the income capability of a property as a measure of value. The concepts in this approach are not nearly as ingrained in agricultural investment as they are in commercial investment properties, such as retail, industrial, office, or multifamily residential properties. The second method is the cost approach, which is based on the principle of substitution. Generally, no one would pay more for a building than it would cost to build an identical structure themselves. This method is best used when there are limited comparable sales or you're dealing with a unique property. This approach involves estimating the replacement cost of the buildings, subtracting depreciation in all its forms, and then adding an estimate of the land value. Now, depreciation can come in various forms, namely, number one, physical depreciation, such as a cracked foundation or a broken window. Number two, functional obsolescence, so some sort of deficiency or over-improvement compared to the market, such as building layout. And number three, external obsolescence, so a loss of value from economic or locational factors outside of the control of the owner, for example, an oversupplied market. Depreciation is what leads to a decrease in building value. This can help explain why a new building is typically worth less than its construction cost. Now I'll demonstrate this with an example using a hog barn built in the 1990s. First, we estimate the cost to replace the barn using current costs and materials. Then, we consider the physical, physical depreciation, so the age and the condition of the building, the functional obsolescence, for example, it might have low ceilings, and external obsolescence, such as the proximity to a city or a town. We then subtract the depreciation from the replacement cost estimate and add that value to the land estimate to determine a market value of the property. As mentioned, this approach is used when there are limited improved sales or you're dealing with a specialized building. The third approach is the direct comparison approach to value, which is the most common used method to, use to value real estate. The main premise of this approach is that market value can be supported by the market's reaction to comparable properties. For example, if your neighbor's land sold a few weeks ago at market value, and your property is very similar, that would likely be a good indicator of your property's value. The application of this approach is fairly straightforward. We use comparable properties that have recently sold to determine an appropriate value for the property in question. It's important to note that, there, that three or more sales should be used in this approach. As they say, one sale does not make a market. Now, when using this approach, we use a specific unit of comparison, which differs based on the industry or type of property. So our examples here, We've got cultivated land, which would be the sale price divided by the number of cultivated acres, a dairy barn, which would be the sale price divided by dairy cow stalls, and the feed mill, which would be the sale price divided by bushel capacity. Let's try this out with an example. So we've got a quarter section, or let's say 160 acres of cultivated land. We'd start by researching the market for similar properties that are recently sold, making sure we use information that's accurate and part of arm's length transactions. So say we have our three sales, which is the minimum we usually use. And then we select the appropriate units of comparison. So in this case, that'd be the dollar per cultivated acre. And then we identify the differences between the sales and the subject. So we'd look at the property size, soil capability and productivity, et cetera. And then we adjust them based on those differences. Typically an inferior property would sell for less and a superior property for more. And then finally, we reconcile those three sales into a single estimate and multiply it by our 160 acres of our subject property to get our market value. So this is the most common approach as it can be applied to all types of properties, but is best used when there are good comparable sales. So there's several reasons why you might have to value agricultural real estate. And when you do, there are three main approaches. The income approach, which as I mentioned, is best suited to commercial investment properties. The cost approach, 
which can be helpful when there are limited comparable sales or of improved properties, or you're dealing with a unique building. And the direct comparison approach, which is the most commonly used method, thus when there are good comparable sales. So there's pros and cons to each method, but they can be helpful tools in valuing agricultural real estate. Valuing a property can be tied to a big decision for your operation. And if you're looking at your options, feel free to reach out to your local FCC office. Thank you.